Greetings everyone and welcome back to the Inside EV's YouTube channel. My name is Andre and I am one of Inside EV's European uh, writers. And today I had the chance to spend a few hours with the new Dacia Spring, which has the potential to become one of Europe's most popular electric vehicles. It's really good and I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> The Spring is actually based on the Renault Quid, a model launched, I think it was in 2014, for the Indian market, and it was a very, very cheap car. It didn't even have uh, roll-up uh, seat belts. They just kind of flopped around on the seat when they weren't in use. Then the vehicle was updated a few years later for the Chinese market. And they improved its safety credentials and also updated the tech. Oh, and they gave it a fully electric powertrain. Then Dacia decided that while it did want to have an electric vehicle in its range, it uh, couldn't be bothered to uh, engineer one from the ground up. Basically, the Dacia Spring is again an updated version of the Chinese market vehicle. So what is it about? Specs first. This car has an air-cooled 33 kilowatt hour battery pack, whose usable capacity is 28.6 kilowatt hours. This gives it a claimed a WLTP range in the city of 280 kilometers. And in the real world, you can easily expect it to exceed 200 kilometers. I did a quick range test earlier with this vehicle and drove it for around 125 kilometers. And when I returned, I still had 60% left in the battery. I started with 100%, it was fully charged and it recorded an impressive uh, electricity consumption figure of 11.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which you can see in other uh, units of measurement here. That means it's remarkably efficient. And that's because it's a small and light car. It weighs under a ton. It's front wheel drive and its uh, electric motor isn't really that powerful. It only makes 33 kilowatts or 45 horsepower and it's claimed uh, not to 100 kilometers per hour time is almost 20 seconds so yeah but when you're just driving it in town it actually feels uh, decent up to 50 60 kilometers per hour yes it's definitely an underpowered car by most modern standards it's um you don't mind it it just gets you from point A to point B. It is the definition of no frills. As you can see, it accelerates cleanly and we're already doing, uh, we did about almost 60 kilometers per hour then, in a few seconds. And it's, it's fine, it's adequate. You probably, <laughs> wouldn't even need more power. I don't even believe myself when I'm saying this, but for this type of car, it's fine. It's totally fine. This is the automotive equivalent of a scooter or like a Vespa thing, you know, a small displacement motorbike or something. This vehicle is very cheap and it feels cheap. The materials are all hard plastics that will hopefully stand the test of time, so they will be durable and hard-wearing. Which is at least a bit of a decent trade-off for having uh, not very nice to touch materials inside the cabin. There's also no adjustment for the steering wheel, either for reach or rake. Neither of the front seats can be adjusted uh, for height. Although you can slide them forward and back, obviously, and adjust the, the backrest. Another telltale sign that this is a very cheap car is that you can hear the small servo for the assisted steering. It's one of the loudest I've ever heard in a modern car. 
but at least the steering is light and it does the job. It's fine. It has a small infotainment screen, which has a resistive screen. So that's the old style screen where you actually have to apply force to it to input your commands. Manual air conditioning. You can turn off the ESP here. There's a, a stowage space. You can put your mobile phone in. It looks big enough for, a, for an inductive charging pad, but I don't think this car has one. And the selector for drive, neutral, and reverse is a rotary one. You have a traditional handbrake. And you, while you don't have a, a cruise control per se, you have a speed limiter. So you can just set the speed limiter and then floor the, the go pedal. And it will essentially maintain <laughs> that speed. Wow, feel the power. This car has four electric windows, if you can believe that. The switches for the front electric windows are on the center stack just below the, the infotainment screen. And you don't actually have a way to operate the rear electric windows from the driver's seat because they only have buttons on the, on the rear door panels for the rear passengers to operate, which is kind of an unusual solution. Older Dacia models had them uh, in between the seats here, where both the driver and the rear passengers could access them. This was a clever way of cost cutting so that they only had to install one set of buttons. At higher speeds, some wind noise does begin to make its presence felt in the car, but it's decently soundproofed, I think. It's not horrible. I drove it at higher speeds at like 120, 125 kilometers per hour. And it didn't feel quite as stable as I would have liked because it's running on 14 inch uh, rims with the 165 section tires. These are obviously low rolling resistance tires that make this car's impressive range possible. Now I mentioned this car is cheap and it really is. This one costs 18,100 euros. Although in Romania, the government will cover up to 10, well, it's around 9,000 euros actually, or up to half of the cost of a vehicle. So for this car, you end up paying half price, which is excellent. It's therefore no wonder that on the day that Dacia launched uh, pre-orders for the first uh, batch of, I think it's, 4,000 examples, in a matter of hours, all of them had been spoken for. That's pretty impressive. And it shows that even though Romania lags behind other countries when it comes to EV adoption, when you have a tempting financial proposition, Romanians are uh, more than um, interested. And I'm genuinely happy that this cute little runabout will help with the electrification of my country. That it will make the air in major cities more breathable and filled with fewer nasty particulates. I maybe would have liked a few things about its formula tweaked. For instance, do you really need 15 centimeters of ground clearance in a city vehicle? And I'm sure it has a negative effect on this car's aero credentials. If you were to uh, have it uh, sit lower to the ground, it would be even more efficient. And while I understand why they don't have reach adjustment for the steering wheel, because that's absent in many cheaper cars, I would have liked uh, rake adjustment. Because you sit so high, you tend to want the steering wheel a bit higher, I think. But other than that, for the kind of money you pay for this car, which is practically Europe's most affordable electric car, that's a real car, that's not a, a quadricycle, as they call it. It's a tempting buy. It's a tempting proposition. It's a real car. It has autonomous emergency braking, a reversing camera, parking sensors. You are not rained on when it's raining. It's um. Reasonably compelling, I think. Hence the frantic scramble to pre-order one. 
This car doesn't really have that many options. Although the one you should uh, pick, regardless if you choose any other, is the ability to fast charge. You can optionally have a 30 kilowatt charger installed for, I think it's like 500 euros. Because otherwise you're stuck with the peak charging rate of the onboard charger, the standard one, which is 6.6 .6 kilowatts. So with that charger, you would have to let it charge overnight. While if you opt for the 30 kilowatt charger and find a quick charger enough to uh, provide at least 30 kilowatts, you're looking at uh, like 10% uh, to 80% in uh, an hour or flat to full in uh, an hour and a half. So that's pretty decent. I think this car with the incentives at 9,000 euros in Romania is an absolute bargain. It's obviously not perfect, but it's engineered, designed and built down to a cost, while at the same time not neglecting the things that people like to see in electric vehicles, which is a long range and gadgets. And it has some gadgets. It's not devoid of gadgets. That pretty much sums things up. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like it and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. And until the next video, take care.